Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down the risk of severe weather over the next several days which one day in particular could be quite significant. We'll also be discussing the wildfires in Canada and where the huge plume of wildfire smoke is heading next. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this weather forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. Well first begin with the Northeast that is where a very large low pressure system still remains. This has been bringing tons of wildfire smoke out of Canada from those wildfires that are still ongoing and that is bringing huge air quality concerns across areas in the northeast, mid-Atlantic and even parts of the Midwest will be dealing with that wildfire smoke over the next 24 to 48 hours and I'll be discussing more on where this is heading in just a moment. For those in the central United States, a couple different areas to watch, one of which is that high pressure system in the northern plains that is keeping areas fairly dry overall, at least from precipitation but we are still watching a lot of heat building into this area potential for record-breaking temperatures will continue over the next several days but there will be a weather pattern change that'll definitely change things i'll show you that in just a moment down in the southwest united states we actually have a low pressure system spinning on kind of like the west coast area this is going to continue to spin over the next few days we'll eventually see this move a bit more inland and this is going to be our next chance for some substantial severe weather for some of those in the southern plains luckily we're not looking at a widespread severe weather outbreak but we could be looking at at least a little regional severe weather outbreak potentially as we go into this weekend again more details in just a moment now for the next few days we'll have an interesting pattern as of right now we still have that massive low pressure system in the northeast we also have a massive ridge in the central and northern plains this is essentially an omega block pattern our other low pressure system and this is in the southwest united states and again this is the jet stream this is your omega block though it looks like the greek letter that's basically what this weather pattern is and usually when we have this weather pattern we're looking at a massive block in the great plains that usually brings much warmer weather and occasionally some storms but usually it's drier overall but this will start to change over the next few days you'll notice as we go into Saturday that ridge moves very far up to the north and west you're actually going to notice that's back up in Canada and then we'll be watching for a trough ejection in the southwest United States and this could be our next chance for some substantial severe weather and in addition to this we'll be watching another low pressure system this one actually coming out of Canada and this will drop north to south and this will basically be kind of one of those surprise low pressure systems that we occasionally see in the Midwest where we're going to actually potentially see some severe weather and at least some showers and storms come out of this for those in the Midwest Ohio Valley in the Northeast so very interesting pattern set up as we go into the late this weekend and recognized by Monday we're going to have a massive trough building into the Midwest what this will allow is showers and storms on the east and southern side of this we could actually see some severe weather as well out of it as of right now though the severe weather potential is low at this time and then notice the other trough ejection in the southwest United States this could really ramp up severe weather in the high plains as we go into Monday and Tuesday with very strong winds aloft here in the jet stream that's going to be able to help increase the longevity of supercells once we go into Tuesday that's when that other trough in the Midwest moves off to the east we'll be watching another trough back over on the western half of the United States and then eventually as we go into Thursday and Friday and next week things become more uncertain but it is likely that a new ridge will start to build in we could see a negatively tilted trough as well at the very end of this forecast so potentially going closer to the 16th and 17th of June but as of right now again things become much more uncertain by then one very fascinating part to all this by the way before we go into the specifics with severe weather is the moisture and the dew points you're going to notice as we go into friday into saturday look at the crash of dew points moving down from north to south this is because of that high pressure in the northwest united states this is going to essentially crash down and we're actually going to see an increased risk of severe weather both saturday and sunday in the southern parts of the united states so areas like texas as well as the mississippi valley will actually have a chance for an increased risk of severe weather for both of those days and that's because of this big crash of moisture we're gonna have a lot of moisture in this area we're talking about dew points in the low 70s that is very humid especially with temperatures in the 90s heat indices could be as high as the 100 so it's gonna be very hot in those areas once we go into monday into tuesday notice all that moisture actually starts to crank up into the northeast united states with that low pressure system centered over areas like michigan and this will very well produce the potential for at least some showers and storms we might see some severe weather out of that and there will still be moisture in the southern plains that's fairly typical for any time in the spring or summer and this weather pattern will just continue throughout the upcoming week and we'll be watching for more severe weather potential in the Great Plains and maybe even the Midwest as we go into the later part of next week but again things become uncertain by then. Now for severe weather for the rest of today a couple areas to watch for one actually back over on the east coast that's going to include areas like Virginia and North Carolina another risk in the northern plains we have one slight risk down in the southeast parts of Texas and one more risk down in the southeast United States all of which 
which are mainly for just damaging winds and large hail. But for tomorrow, things get much more interesting. We're actually looking at a very organized area for a potential for severe weather. Usually when areas are larger like this, it usually indicates a bit more of an organized event of severe weather. So we are definitely going to be watching for that potential. There's actually a slight risk of severe weather for those in parts of Kansas, the Oklahoma Panhandle, and as well as Southeast Colorado. This is mainly for damaging winds and large hail. I wouldn't rule out an isolated brief tornado, but I think that risk does remain low because of a weak low-level jet. And then back down in the Southeast United States, Florida is under a partial marginal risk of severe weather just for some sporadic hail or wind threats. Now for the timing tomorrow, nothing too crazy here. Again, it's, it's going to be a bit more organized in comparison to most marginal risks of severe weather that we see, mainly because it's a much larger area. But you'll notice going closer to the evening, this is around 6 or 7 o'clock or so tomorrow, there will be some showers and storms popping up. Most of these are going to be widely scattered overall. Just damaging winds is really my main concern. Strongest of storms could produce that large hail potential. You'll notice going closer around midnight or so. A more, bit more of an organized, maybe MCS situation just southwest of DFW, but I don't think it'll be too, too organized. And then back up in Oklahoma during the overnight hours, we could be talking about a bit more of a damaging wind component out of an MCS situation. So we'll have to watch that back up in Oklahoma and Kansas. But overall, again, nothing too, too organized. It will be organized, but just not nearly as organized as it could be. And usually it would have to be much more organized for a substantial risk of severe weather. Out of this, we're just looking at maybe some scattered damaging winds, and that's at best. I don't think it'll be anything worse than that. Now, in my opinion, Saturday has the greatest risk of severe weather out of at least the next three days. We'll have to watch Sunday in particular for maybe a risk of severe weather, potentially another slight risk. But this is when we could actually see the potential for some more significant severe weather in terms of damaging winds upwards of 70 to 75 miles per hour, large hail potentially up to two to two and a half inch diameter, and as well as maybe a couple of tornadoes. And that's primarily across areas in the Southern Plains and Lower Mississippi Valley. You'll notice that slight risk does include Oklahoma parts of Arkansas, Louisiana, and as well as North Texas. And then that marginal threat does extend into Missouri, Kansas, and as well as back down through parts of Southwest Mississippi. Now there is a hatched area for Saturday. So we'll have to watch this area closely. That's going to be from the Oklahoma City Metro back through areas in Waco. This also includes the DFW Metroplex. Again, this is the area that we might see some more significant severe weather. Again, we're talking about the threat for maybe an increased risk of some substantial damaging winds and as well as large to very large hail. So be keeping that in mind as we go into Saturday. Now, one key thing to Saturday as of right now, the low-level jet is going to be very weak. This means the tornado risk will also be fairly low. We're watching for a low-level jet around 20 to 25 knots, and that is not very strong at all. And the low-level jet is what helps to rotate uh, supercells in the lower levels, and that helps to produce a increased tornado risk. We're really not looking at much of that at all tomorrow. Usually we need something around 40 to 45 knots for a bit more of at least a medium risk of tornadoes. We're looking at a very low risk, if anything. So that's good news there. Instability, though, this is essentially like putting gasoline into a vehicles, but in this sense, it is fueling severe thunderstorms. We'll have plenty of instability. So severe weather is definitely going to be a potential for Saturday. You'll notice instability values upwards of 3,000 joules per kilogram. That's a lot of daylight heating. So we're definitely going to have to watch for that potential. This very well could create a pretty substantial severe weather threat for at least damaging winds and hail. Now, for the future radar going into Saturday, we'll be watching for a linear line of storms during the morning hours, Friday night to Saturday morning. This is going to be one of two different threats that we're watching. This would be mainly damaging winds. Now, depending on when or if this weakens, that could determine if we see a second round of severe weather. So you'll notice that goes through areas like Arkansas and Louisiana, but there could be a second shot for severe weather during the afternoon. This is around 3 p.m. That is where we could end up seeing the potential for more substantial severe weather with very large hail and as well as some significant damaging winds being a potential. But that is a big if right now. If that linear line of storms that MCS moves through North Texas, I doubt we'll see this because there will be sinking air in place. But if there is no storms that really come through during the late morning, the risk of severe weather during the late afternoon becomes much lower because of that sinking air potential. So we'll watch it closely for you. Make sure you stay tuned with Max Velocity for the latest. And lastly, the wildfire smoke. It's been a big topic of discussion for the last several days. Places like New York City have looked like Mars. And that's all because of all the wildfire smoke out of Canada. Now, there are some things to keep in mind here over the next 24 to 48 hours. This is the HRR model. And anywhere in that red and pink is representing the potential for hazardous air quality. That means there's going to be a lot of wildfire smoke, and that really starts to sink in to areas like Pennsylvania, Virginia, and even into parts of uh, Ohio. That's really where we have to watch that risk for tonight. Once we go into tomorrow afternoon, that is when that wildfire smoke fills more into Ohio. And you'll notice going into Saturday, look at the wildfire smoke back up in Canada. That's where the fires are. You'll notice the winds are actually going to be coming out of the south at that point. That could help to decrease the wildfire smoke in the northeast as we go into the weekend. So something to really keep a very close eye on will be that area. And once we go into late Saturday or really during the morning hours, 
course that is when wildfire smoke will kind of just sit over areas like ohio pennsylvania so there will still be some wildfire smoke but notice the oranges that's going to represent maybe some moderate air quality issues but it's at least not going to be hazardous so no areas will be looking like mars by then so that's good news there but we'll be watching this very closely for you make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video for the latest